Uh, would you play a little something for us? Yeah, you want, you want me to play something? Sure. You ready? Yeah. I'm Kevin Richardson for Time to Inspire Journal. Uh, Coburn and I are good friends. We go back, I don't know how many years, a long time. Several decades, yeah. Several decades. Uh, Coburn is the creator of the Celestial Tones, which is a unique, original in musical instrument, which you will see later on in the in our presentation here. Um, uh, so, I guess we'll start uh, with, since I'm saying it is a unique instrument, I don't know of any other instrument similar to it. It has some similarities to some instruments, but it's a, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, you could say it's a hybrid. It's this part wind chime, part orchestra bells, part glockenspiel, part, you know, it's like, and you were on, uh, you were on the, what point <laughs> version of, of Oh. Uh, we've lost crowd count. It's been 26 years and there have been so many versions of it. This is the final one, finally. Okay. For the last four years, but yeah. I'm surprised to hear you say that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've run out, it's, I don't have any more room in the studio, so I can't, so I can't get any bigger. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. Um, so, uh, what, where, what, what happened that, that started you off on creating this? Issue? When and where and... Well, it was October 1996, and uh, I was actually in the process of writing my second book and it was just agonizing because I couldn't make myself sit down. So I'm on my midnight walk and I'm going, okay guys, you want me to write this book? I've got, the, I've got the cover, I've got things recorded. Why can't I do it? And I heard this beautiful sound wafting through the neighborhood. And it was really, really misty that night. It's like, well, what's that? And it was wind chimes. And that was the first time I'd heard the really, really pretty ones. Right. I heard the tinky tinky ones, you know, <laughs> in the, the band, clanky, clanky but, but, but this was like, that's just really, and it was really foggy, that night. It was foggy, so it was really magic that night. Yeah. And it's like, I think I'll make some wind chimes, that's really cool. So I went by Rose Metal, I was driving by Rose Metal Products the next day, and I was like, well, let's see what they have. You know, and remember the Mellotrons in the second grade, you know, those big square things, you know, boom, 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 but I saw some of those, oh, that's cool, you know, and I bought some other stuff. And I took it home and, and took them home and I strung them up and the Mellotrons were a thumb, 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 the cycle, but there was the tube and when I hit it, it lasted almost a minute. Wow. And I was hooked. It was just like, I went back the next day and bought 20 feet of it. I went back two days later and bought another 20 feet and started racking them up. And it's just like, what is this? <laughs> what can I do with, and it was wind chimes, these are not wind chimes, this is a musical instrument. And it was like, and it took me 10 years to make a decent instrument that had a sound that, it's kind of like I felt there was a sound here that was unique and wonderful and inspiring and healing and all of those things. It took me 10 years to find it. It actually took me 20 years to find it. Wow. That's persistence. Be that's inspiration. <laughs> that's inspiration. And, and thousands of inspirations along the way, even little ones. I mean, I was... 
when I was I was going to build instruments and sell them. That was the original thing. Right. It's like okay, yeah, and then I won't have to do my set design business anymore. I can I can sell these instruments. They're a lot more fun to play. They're a lot more fun to to, to, to build, and right. they'd be fun to sell. Someone else would want one. So it's like, how am I going to mark what notes they are? I don't want to put A B C sharp D. You know, and the friend said, what about numbers? And I go, no, no, no. And I'm on my walk, and my angel say, make them the color of the chakras that they represent. And it's like, oh, well, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? So the C note is red, and the D note is orange, up, and up, up, the, up the rainbow. Right. So it's, in, in, I mean, and even in my business as a set designer, you know, thousands of intuitions, you know, it's like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, and, and and really that was my opening up to spirit, right. understanding that it wasn't me. It, I didn't inspire myself to start building the celestial tones, right. and I I didn't inspire myself to build all these things that I built. They just I had an opportunity to do it, and I figured it out with with help. Right, right. And four years ago, I started on the, the big celestial tones, which. Is the one we're talking about. Is the one we're talking it's about. It's outgrown, almost outgrown the space that it's in. Well, the one I had before, the Triple Pyramid set, uh, took three hours to take it apart and put it in the cases, and then three hours to set it up. And, okay, that's not going to move, because <laughs> I thought I was going to be doing some concerts. Right. And it's like, well, I can't have the stage all day. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, just hang around. He's going to play in about three hours, and then, well, then hang around. He's going to take it off the stage. So I started redesigning it, and one that just kind of flumps together, right? And and you can take it apart in an hour or so. Which is your trade show background, because that was what you were brilliant at. Yeah, how to make things so they move and reassemble. All right. Man, it took three years to build it. Wow. Full time. Wow. Fortunately, I had I had some money coming in. It's like, okay, here we go. Hmm. <laughs> cool. What can we do now? We've got time. We've got money. We've got inspiration. We have everything we need. <laughs> Let's just get busy. Let's just get busy and do this, sucker. And it's like, and it's like, okay, finally, there she is. Yeah. You know, 25 years later. Wow. But that—that's the strength of those kind of intuitions. It's like you can't not do it. Right. Have you ever tried to resist those intuitions? Or you just oh, at the beginning, I—I I didn't believe in. My very first intuition, yeah. um, when my daughter was born, we, she didn't have a name because we couldn't find anyone that fit. Right. And probably 30 seconds after she was born, I heard this voice say, my name is Cheyenne. Wow. And I bent over to her mother who was in, in the delivery room. I said, her name is Cheyenne. And she went, yep, yep, that's her name, that's her name. That's it. Whew, baby has a name. <laughs> and it was like, okay, she talked to me and she's 30 seconds old. This is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're already talking. You know, it's like, and, and it's like, okay, there's something else going on here besides me and my physical body. You know, and that was the beginning of things. Wow. Wow, with the birth of your daughter. With the birth of my daughter, yeah. So, there, was there any growing up, I mean, with your parents and all? Was that no, my parents were hellfire and brimstone. You know, if you want to talk to God, God's up there. You don't, you don't talk to your angels, you talk to God. Or you talk to Jesus, one of the two. You don't create or you don't... You don't create anything. anything on your own. You, you wait for God to give you what he's going to give you. And so when God gave you Cheyenne... I went, thank you very much. This, this is part of my creation. You know, interestingly enough, when, when you pray <laughs> to God, you close your eyes and you raise your eyelids, that accesses your third eye, which is how you talk to angels. <laughs> you know, I was just like, okay, I understand there's something in all religions that work, which makes people believe the rest of it. Right. <clears throat> so I got rid of the hellfire and brimstone, and that was the beginning of me searching for uh, a sense of divinity, a sense of spirit. Right. And the art really helped because it's like, okay, here, here's some inspiration. Here's a vehicle. Here's a vehicle that you can use, and we will communicate to you. And here's some music. I mean, if, when I when I write music, I don't sit down and write music. It just comes through. 
So do you have any musical background? Did you play music when you were I younger? I messed around on the guitar and I played a little piano in college. So you had a basic understanding. Basic understanding. Well, I had a, I had a wonderful uh, dance teacher who was my mentor. And she said, there's a difference between expression and self-expression. She said, the expression is something that comes out of your brain. It's probably something you've seen. Expression is something that comes through you. And so when it came my first time to, to choreograph a dance, because I was in the dance department. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd been dancing. I'd had two, two classes a day for four months, so it's time to choreograph. Right. <laughs> you know, well, of course, that's an the seasoned <laughs> dancer that I was, right? <laughs> And I, I wrote I wrote some music and I got some dances together and it came through. You know, it's like, okay, that works. You just get out of the way and it comes through. Right. And it was just really, really cool. And it wasn't, you know, earth shattering dances, but people liked them and, and you know and I liked them. Right. But it's 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 it, it, it's like that was all training for opening up to spirit. Right. Through the vehicle of various kinds of art. Which then kind of, as I understand it, you know, since we talked about it off and on, and I've worked with you in the trade show part of your life, um, after you, as you were getting ready to graduate from school, from college, um, this, somebody just contacted, because you, you also were not only dancing and acting, but you were totally set because you had background in carpentry. Yeah, because I was, I was a, a master craftsman at that point, master okay. woodworker. Right. So, but I was, I was uh, wondering what to do because I just graduated and I was back building cabinets again and it was boring as heck because after... <laughs> A box is a box. <laughs> After nine years in the theater department doing video and mime and dance and, and acting and theater and, and directing and composition and you know, like, I was like, oh, okay. Make a box. <laughs> but, but I got a call from somebody and they needed somebody to build some sets. And I, and I went to, to visit this guy and he looked at me and I looked at him and it was like, you're the guy I've been looking for. And, wow. that, and that started this career of, of 26 years, 27 years of, of building sets. Everything from animated characters to waterfalls and steam trains and, and animated dragons and just whatever fits the theme. It was, and it was wonderfully creative and challenging and interesting and fun. Right. And, and I got paid for it. Well, yeah. And, and the other thing was, too, that working with you and just the concept of it, that, that alone, creating the creative sets and the environments, sets, theatrical sets, really, for a trade show. Mm -hmm. um, that would be one thing. That would be like creating a set for a play that's in a stationary point. But you had to design these things with the knowing that you had to take it apart, put it on a truck, somehow get it into another space, assemble it, Make sure it works, and in in a day and a half. In yeah. a day and a half. Yeah. And right. then take it back down again, transport it, and store it. Right. That just that is mind blowing. It's it's one thing to be super creative about having these environments and these sets and these displays, but then to factor in all that other stuff, it's like a portable. It's like being on the road with a theatrical company. Yeah, and I was just able to do it with help from my angels because they were there all the time. Let me give you an example. When, when I was doing Scorch, which was my 35-foot animated dragon, you know, <laughs> I was thinking, I, I built the, 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 the center part, the, her, her chest area, and it's like, well, you know, we can just lift this onto a dolly and when we're ready to move. And I heard, no, build the dolly into her. And it's like, oh, yeah. Of course. Hey. <laughs> then she doesn't fall off, and and you know, and you can go you know, up under the truck, and it's like stuff like that all the time. It's like it's like the muses, the angels, my angels yeah. were there all the time helping, and, and thank goodness because those were huge sets oh, yeah. and tight deadlines, and and I'd never built an animated dragon before, you know. 
right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, and it was like, okay, where do we start? Let's make a rib and see what happens, you know? <clears throat> right. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's, it's that kind of stuff. And so when it came time to start building uh, Celestial Towns, it's like I had all of this experience in being able to build anything. It's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Right. And I know I've got help all along the way, and and uh, let's do it. Yeah, I exactly. I mean, I I totally understand what you're saying about once you decide to do something and you strike off on it, not knowing where you're going, as you get to those points where you need to know what you're doing <laughs> or how to do it, it just appears. It just appears, right. It's like once you say yes to it, the universe is, is on your side. Because it's not necessarily your work, it's the work. It's the work. It doesn't matter if it's a trade show, I did a lot of stuff in Branson, didn't matter what it was, it's like, here, we're there for you all the time, and we're there for you for, I mean, I also do energy healing, we're there for you with that too, that we're there for you. Right. Period. Once you've got got to that point of uh, following intuition, did you ever have instances where you would freeze up? Is it, was there something that would freeze you up where you, or did you just learn to, because I know in my experience, I've gotten better at not doing that, mm -hmm. but there have been those times where stress or time frame or whatever, it's like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> you know, and it's like it's just it's a perfect way to just shut everything down. Well, and temporarily. It, and at first, of course, it's like, yeah, right. I'm going to be able to do this. Yeah, right. I'm intuitive. Yeah, right. I'm a genius. <laughs> uh huh. Sure, I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, obviously, but the more you do it, the more you trust intuition. The, the more you see that, that it works, and it's not always it's not always right on. Yeah, and you, once you've done it, it's like, oh, I could have done it that way. I could have done it that way, but but this worked, and you know. Right, exactly. And uh, and uh, knowing in, in my healing work, uh, about three years ago, all of a sudden I, I started being able to just to see the energy that I was working on with, with my eyes closed. And it was like, thank you, because before that I was guessing. Right. You know, feeling is like, I, I think, you know, this is going on, you know, I think this is going, and, and now I can see it, it's like, wonderful, because now I can see it, and then I'm sure of what I'm doing. I have, a re I have more of a reference. I have more of a reference now, <laughs> then, well, I think I'm, blah, 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 you know, this looks like a whatever, and, and that's another thing that when you're ready to do something, the angels are there to open you up to be able to do it. They're like, oh, okay. Well, here's a little more. Here's a little more. You what? Oh, you want to do this? Okay. You know, but then. So, so where did where did you first realize that you had that? That it, do you think it's the same intuition, or do you think it's a different? Are there kinds of intuition? I think there's multiple muses. I think there's angels in charge of anything because I do tarot readings too. I've been doing it for almost fifty years. I think there's tarot angels, I think there's music angels, I think there's art angels, I think there's construction angels, <laughs> healing angels, I think there's angels for absolutely everything, not only the ones that are around us all the time, but even like uh, like my friend Shane's calls special agent angels that come in for a specific project. You know, ah, okay. You know, it's like there's so many entities on the other side that, that are there to help, you know, and I mean, that's, that's their... That's their modus, right? You know, help any way you can. Right. And opening up to them, uh, I think, is what the shift of consciousness is all about. You know, we're not just three-dimensional beings. You know, we're not human beings trying to find a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings trying to find a human experience. Right. And that's the shift. It's like, and that opens up a tremendous amount of things. You know, the kids call me wizard, and it's just, it's just listening. Paying attention. It's just paying attention. Yeah. Like, you know, people asked uh, Rembrandt about his genius, and he said, genius is attention to detail. It's just paying attention. That's all it is. Yeah. Being, 
inspired enough, being uh, uh, maybe obsessed enough. <laughs> you know, it's like, hmm, what can we do with this? Well, that could be a little bit. Well, what if we did this? You know, it's like that excitement. Right. And that makes life, you know, and the same excitement that you have for a lover, you have for what you're doing. Right. You know, it's just, it's just like, yeah, what, and, and what can we do with this? Well, I don't know. We'll figure out something, you know? And let it evolve and, and, and be patient with it. And we all have these angels. They're around all the time, and they're, and they're ready to go 24-7, and they're absolutely free. So why not? <laughs> Call now. <laughs> Call now. Your angels are online. <laughs> waiting. Waiting for your call. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just such an amazing journey. To open up to that stuff, and it started. I started doing healings in like ni in the nineties with some kids that needed help. Yeah. Just kind of going, well, I don't know what's going on, but let's see what we can do. And I started channeling a little bit. You know, very very doubtful. Going, well, I think you know. Well, let's see what this. To see what this is, but <laughs> this but is helpful. with enough feedback from them going, oh yeah, I see that. Yeah, oh yeah, that really helps. It's like you begin to trust. Hmm. You begin to trust the inner voice. I said, okay, this isn't me. This isn't me. So, you, I'm, you know, at first it's like, well, I'm... <laughs> hey, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. I'm really cool, you know? <laughs> and then it's like, well, no, you know, that's not that's not yeah, me. That's, yeah. that's, that's something else that's coming through me. Right. And I had enough training in, in theater and dance to... Because that stuff just comes through you. Right. I mean, you work on your character, but then at some point you are the character. And it just clicks. And it's like, oh... Yeah. Okay. Wow. And it's inspiring, you know. And that's and that's the hook of art is that there's that there's those moments of inspiration. Sometimes there's hours of inspiration when you when you oh, what, yeah. yeah when you can't set it aside because it's so interesting and so fascinating. And before you know it, it's like hours. Hours are gone. Later. Yeah. But you can use that same cel that same kind of celebration, fascination, for your own spiritual growth. Yeah. For your meditation practice, for for your yoga practice, you know, um, I would love to see more celebration of life. There's so many people are just going, oh, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, yeah. day in day out. Oh, how's everything going? Oh, same old, same old. It's like, no, every day's a brand new baby. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know this is it, and there's so much more going on than we ever imagined possible when you open up the spirit, you know? That's pretty amazing, but if you think of that, you know, if that's, if that's happening through me, you know, what else is going on? Yeah, what can everyone else do? If I can do this, yeah. what can everyone else do? Right. You know, some, someone else more brilliant could have designed celestial tones in two years instead of 25. You know, maybe I'm a slow learner. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, that was your special project. That was my special project. And, you know, it's like, just, if I can say anything, it's like open up to spirit, open up to angels, open up to intuition, however you want to say it. Yeah, and whatever. Open up to Jesus, day. whatever works for you. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a whole, there's more dimensions than these three. I mean, even physics say there's at least 12 dimensions, if not more. Wow. Yeah. That's, you know. that's mind blowing. And that's science. Right, yeah. And science tells us that everything is energy. You know, the most, one, the most wonderful thing that we have going right now is that we have the perfect metaphor for how everything is energy. Right. We have the movie. Because the movie is a source of light goes through film, puts an image on the screen. Now, if you want to change the movie, you don't change the screen, you change the film. <laughs> right? Right. So, basically, our life energy, our life light, goes through the film of our consciousness and produces a three-dimensional, interactive, holographic movie. And, and up to this point, in most of our lives, we're out here trying to arrange all these things in order to build a, a deep sense of satisfaction within. We need to start from here and let it come out. Right. And that's the shift. And now we have a metaphor. We go, oh, well, that makes sense. You know, and even the kids playing video games, like my grandson and Aslan, you know, he makes a change and it changes the, the outcome of the video game. Right. And he's going, yeah, everything's energy. You just change this and it changes that. You know, he's understanding it at 17. <laughs> through a video game. Through a video game. <laughs> you know, and it's all working to, to, to make the shift of consciousness happen, to understand that we are divine beings having a, a physical, mental, and emotional experience. Yeah. 
can call them bodies if you want to. But the reality is that we're spirit. And it's just, it's mind-blowing, hopefully. Hopefully. In a good way. <laughs> In a good way. To get rid of all those old ridiculous ideas. Well, all that other stuff. And, and, and see that everything is just, is just this incredible expansion of love and joy and light. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of where I am in my understanding. So, with all that, with all this background, with the celestial tones kind of in its final metamorphosis, final way of being, what, what, what possibly is next? Well, I'm going through some deep healing myself, and with me and my daughter, and also some health problems I'm having. Uh, and it's like the music I did before came through me, but there was always that drive to express myself. And with the healing that's happened, it's like I want it to come out of me as, as, a, as a celebration so that my music is, is, is not my music, it's angelic music. And it's so healing because it's coming from the other side. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does anyway, but it's like, you know, getting rid of the... Of the, of the, of the uh, the captivation and the, and the, and the, the drive, and you know, I have to do this, you know, it, it, which is one way to do it, you know. Sure. But to do it joyfully is another way to do it. So that's kind of what I'm working on. Oh, okay. So in, in all those, still in all those forms. So maybe not so much theater, but I mean... Yeah, I'm not doing theater the anymore. The music, the music, the healing. The and the healing work that I do is, is, is just, okay, it's not like, okay, I'm going to heal you. It's like, okay, let's share something and see if we can get you to a, a higher sense of consciousness so that the healing happens because of your consciousness rather than trying to heal what's going on let's mm -hmm. heal the spirit let's heal the emotions and, and the, so that the body just heals because it doesn't have any other choice you know so the physical is affected by that. yeah because sure. it's all it's all just energy you know spirit becomes uh, mental, emotional, and then physical. So if there's a physical problem, there's problems with the emotional and the mental. Which is psychology. Sure. But also there's karmic things going on within spirit that need to be addressed. And that's where I work. I work in the astral. I, I work in, in that area because when you work in there, it's like, ooh, and it just kind of all filters down. There's still a possibility there. There's still a possibility there. It's like, okay, this is something that you need to learn. This is not something that you need to heal from. This is something that you need to learn that will bring about the healing. Which is what quantum physics is telling us. Which is what quantum physics is telling it's us. It's proving now. You know. Yeah, a hundred years later. After all this. You you know, know. Dr. Niels Bohr got the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1922 for proving that everything is energy. You know what he said? <clears throat> he said, if you're not terribly upset by the ramifications of quantum physics, then you simply have not understood it yet. <laughs> because it changes everything. Right. Every, because the, the current paradigm is based on the idea that the world is real, and it's not. Right. So all those thoughts and all those beliefs, the, the, the heaven and the hell, and the, it's not true. That's just... Everything, every, everything is shifting because the basic foundational idea of life is shifting. Right. So what it, comes, what it comes down to, we're, we're shifting from homo sapiens, thinking humans, to homo spiritus, spiritual humans. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. Well, yeah. That's really, that's, <laughs> that's really big. And it's going to take a while. Well, uh, yeah. I don't think it's going to take a whole lot more because the changes I've seen in, in 60 years I mean, I grew up, there was no yoga, meditation, no women's movement. We didn't even recycle. You didn't go within to find anything. You didn't reflect on anything. You didn't reflect on anything, you know. Yeah. You, you, everything That's was true. black and white, very, very logical, very linear. And now all of a sudden it's like this, this, this billions of people that are journeying in the light. Which is now, we're talking in 2021, now we're talking about still dealing with COVID pandemic. Which is even more added to that as well. Yeah, what a, what a wonderful way to have a, a lot of meditation time when you can't do anything else. <laughs> yeah. And to overcome fear. Right. Because COVID was, you know, I mean, uh, 
my understanding of, of flu is that it's fear. Hmm. And here you go. Here's our biggie. It's a lot of fear. You know, whether you want to understand it, if it's, you know, money or if it's, you know, uh, somebody doing it on purpose, it really doesn't make any difference. It, it's, all, it's all part of, of the shift. Okay. It's like, yeah, th everything's happening for a reason. I do believe that, there's, that, that everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that, then, then you don't get upset. And if you don't get upset, you can expand your light and love no matter what's happening. Because you're, 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 you're not traumatized by whatever it is. Right. You know, and understanding that the, the big boogaboos that are doing the wars and everything, they're doing the best they can. They just don't know any better. They think they're going to find their satisfaction by being, you know, the new rulers of the world. It's not going to work. Yeah. Deep satisfaction comes from within. That's the most amazing discovery of the 21st century. And it's the ancient wisdom. And, and we're finally getting it. It's like, oh, okay. Cause, cause in this country we have... So much, I mean, even my modest circumstances are luxury. You know, and, there, and we have uh, access to any kind of goods known to man and, and entertainments out the wazoo. Oh, yeah. So if we're not happy, it's not because we don't have the stuff. And we've got total freedom. The fact that there's so many miserable people that have access to everything says we've been looking in the wrong place. Yeah, something's, something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, that's why the Buddha laughed. He just went... Oh, we've been looking in the wrong place. We've been looking out here, trying to find, get all the puzzle pieces in, instead, okay. instead of looking within here and finding the source of love and joy and abundance within us and letting it out. Yeah. And, and he, he just fell over laughing. <laughs> He's just like, oh my goodness. You know, you can't find something if you're looking in the wrong place. You know, and we're all searching for the, 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 the fountain of youth and and all my dreams come true. You know, I'm old enough, I've had a lot of dreams come true, even big ones, like, you know, being a, a very fine musician and living in a wonderful place like this. It's a beautiful place. With my own private, you know, swimming holes. They did not make me the happiest person in the world like I thought they would. Right. Getting accolades from people about how wonderful my music was. It's nice. Right. Thank you for telling me it. It wasn't like, okay, I finally... I got what I was looking for. I got what I was looking for. It's like, okay, that's nice, but that's not it either. Yeah. It's not about other people respecting or loving me for what I can do. It's about me loving and respecting myself for the divine being that I am. And it's just like, oh, and everyone can do that. Because not everyone can be a world-class musician. Not everyone can, can be fabulously wealthy. Right. But everyone has a divine soul within them that they can access. And that contributes to everybody. Right. And that's the God I know. The God I know would, would want happiness and joy and abundance available 24-7 for everyone absolutely free. Yeah. Not for just the chosen few. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to me too. You know, and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers with their hundreds of trillions of dollars are still trying for more because they don't have enough yet because they haven't looked within to find it. It's just, that's the Zen joke. Right. And that's what's teaching us. It's like when you follow the ego, it's never enough. When you follow the soul, it is. It's like, shift. And it's like, okay, well, that's really cool. Why didn't we think of it before? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Duh, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, homo sapiens means wise person. It's like, well, mm, mm, not, <laughs> not, not, not quite. Yeah, yeah, not quite yeah. there yet. Not so much. Just thinking about Maybe. it. Thinking about it. But, Sometimes. You know. Well, we could talk for hours, and we have, and we do, <laughs> but well, I yeah. want to thank you for recording this, our, oh, sure. our conversation. I hope it helps someone to open up to spirit, because that's, that's the big deal. And I was going to ask you what's next, but I know what that is. It's following the next thing. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like the end of dreams. One of the, one of the things is you lose your history. And, and you don't really dream about the future because that doesn't matter either. You pay attention to what's going on now. Right. I, I found a wonderful uh, aphorism the other day. It's like, uh, the past is history, the future is mystery, but the present is a gift. That's why we call it the present. Nice. <laughs> it's just like, pay attention to what's going on right now and celebrate what's going on right now. Even if you're sitting alone in a room, 
you know, celebrate that, you know. Who knows where that will take you. Who knows where that will take you, you know. All right. Coburn, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was fun. That was really fun.